Welcome back, DP Review TV viewers. It's Jordan Drake here, your uh, third, second, second favorite host of DP Review TV. Uh, I'm going to be taking over because, unfortunately, Chris is still isolating. There's someone in his household with COVID. He still doesn't have it. Everybody's doing fine. But it means I'm going to take over the hosting duties for this week. And it actually couldn't have come at a better time because we've been posting a few anamorphic episodes recently. And we're just getting a ton of love for how those episodes look. So I really want to talk about this adorable little... Vazen 28mm T2.2 lens. Now it's in the same series as the Vazen 40mm. You might remember we looked at this giant sucker a little while back. You can find the video review on the channel. And in that I talked a little bit about what anamorphic is and why you might like it. So if you haven't already seen that video, definitely take a look. But looking at the two, you can see the immediate appeal for me of this new 28mm. I mean, the 40 is just under two kilograms, where here we're looking at 780 grams for this, and it just balances beautifully on smaller bodies. I was using a GH5, but it would do an excellent job as well on like a Blackmagic Pocket 4K, for example. And there's another big advantage to the smaller size on the 28 millimeter. Looking at this and the 40 millimeter side by side, you can see the 40 millimeter has a huge 95 millimeter front element and no filter threads, where on the 28 millimeter, it's a very standard 77 millimeter filter diameter. Now, something we really struggle with anamorphics is they tend not to have very close minimum focus distances, so it's tough to use them really close to your subject. Now, you can work around that by using diopters, but looking at the giant front element here on the 40 millimeter, it's just going to be very expensive and kind of impractical for smaller shoots to get those, where with the nice common 77 millimeter, you can get all kinds of inexpensive macro diopters. You might not get sharpness edge to edge, but it's certainly nice to have the option to film a little bit closer. As well, the 77 millimeter filter thread on the 28 is great if you just want to add neutral density filters, polarizers, diffusion filters, it's great. Despite being a lot smaller, I actually prefer the build quality on the 28 to the 40 millimeter. Both of those lenses have really nice manual focus rings, but I found that the aperture ring on the 40 was really kind of sloppy, very loose, where it is much tighter, feels a lot better in the 28 millimeter lens. And when you're twisting that manual focus ring from macro to infinity, there is a little bit of breathing, but I don't think it's gonna be super distracting in most shots. A 28 millimeter lens with a 1.8 times squeeze factor on micro four thirds will get you a field of view very similar to a 30 millimeter lens in full frame equivalent, but with this ultra wide aspect ratio that just makes it look very cinematic. Okay, so on a micro four thirds sensor, when is a 28 millimeter anamorphic lens useful? Well, in the Vazen lineup, both the 40 mil and the 65 millimeter both kind of fall on either side of a normal focal range. Don't draw a lot of attention to themselves, but where the 28 millimeter really sings is it gives you a nice wide angle perspective that just does a great job when you want to move the camera. You get this really cool cinematic sense of motion when you're doing that. And the reason I love using this lens on the Panasonic GH5 is it actually has an anamorphic stabilizer mode built right into it. Now on the GH5, it only gives you the option of a two times, so it doesn't totally match up with the 1.8 times anamorphic squeeze on these lenses, but it still looks very good. I would love to see when the GH6 comes out, maybe a 1.8 times de-squeeze option because these Vazen lenses are pretty popular in that format. Okay, we're talking about anamorphics, so we have to talk about flare. And the 28 millimeter lens is very prone to it, which is awesome if you're looking for those big, beautiful horizontal streaks, then you're gonna see a lot of those. I love the look of the flare patterns with this lens. Now bear in mind, there's also a noticeable lack of contrast whenever you have flares in the shot. It looks really cool. It looks like a vintage anamorphic, but if you're looking for a very clean look with those horizontal flares, this might not be the best choice. The good news is you can definitely cook a lot of that back in post. One thing I really worry about with video lenses is loca or longitudinal chromatic aberration where you see the out of focus area kind of get a green to magenta shift in it uh, because it is a huge pain to take care of in post. And fortunately the Vazen 28 millimeter handles loca really quite well. You can see right here, even shooting wide open, we are seeing a little bit of that magenta green split but it's not super distracting in the shot, and this is a pretty extreme example. In the majority of shots, I don't think you'll have to worry about loca at all, and that's really impressive because both the 40 and 65 millimeter, that loca is quite a bit more severe. 
Okay, it's the time you've all been waiting for. Let's talk about sharpness on this lens. And it is very similar to the other lenses in the series in that at T2.2, you will find that it's a fairly soft image, especially in the corners of the frame. Now this lens really sharpens up as soon as we hit even T2.8, the center gets quite a bit sharper and those corners are really starting to improve there and things just get progressively better as you stop down. By T4, those centers look excellent. But if you're planning to use the anamorphic 6K mode in the GH5, I've really found it best to shoot T5.6 to T8. That's kind of the sweet spot where you're gonna get a real resolution advantage using that mode. Now, as you stop down past T8, then diffraction starts to rear its ugly head. Things are gonna get progressively softer. So I'd really only stop down that much if you absolutely need the deepest possible depth of field. By the end of this review, I hope it's apparent that I absolutely love this little lens. And a lot of it just comes down to usability. And the other Vazen lens in the Micro Four Thirds mount, those are definitely gonna slow you down. It's gonna require a lens support. And they're just big heavy suckers where this is a lens I can just pop it on the body, have a pocket full of filters, and go out and capture some cool anamorphic footage. I mean, I've been using it for like home videos, something I would never consider doing with some of those other lenses. Now we are starting to see some budget anamorphic lenses start to pop up, but things like the Saray are a 1.3 times squeeze factor, which works really well with 16 by nine cameras. But I just find that using a 1.8 times on a four by three sensor really gives me a classic Hollywood anamorphic look that I'm just absolutely in love with. And this is certainly not the cheapest lens out there, but in terms of 1.8 squeeze anamorphics, it's not at all unreasonable. This is probably my favorite lens that I've used this year. What I'd really love to see in the Micro Four Thirds mount is a series of compact anamorphics just like this. Maybe do like a 50 and an 80 millimeter. And even if they have to be a little bit slower in order to maintain this form factor, I think that's totally fine. Do like a T3 series or a T4 or something like that. But I'm just becoming really obsessed with the possibility of having very compact anamorphic lenses. I would love to travel and bring a set of these lenses with me. And in the future, I hope Vazen makes that a reality. Well, that's it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. And I hope you got some useful information about the Vazen 28 millimeter anamorphic. If you did, definitely like and subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to check out dpreview.com. They've got all kinds of great articles on photo and video gear. As well, I'm gonna put a link in the description to some of the episodes that I've shot primarily with this lens so you can really take a look at the quality there for yourself. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you again soon for more DP Review TV, hopefully with Chris next time.